Engineered Arts, the creators of the Viral Ameca robot, have launched a powerful new tool that lets anyone control how a robot thinks, feels, and responds. As you can see, my arms, hands, and body are designed for making expressive gestures. No tech skills needed. With just a few clicks, you can rewrite its entire personality. On the same time, a Unitree H1 robot malfunctioned during testing and started violently thrashing mid-air nearly causing an accident and sparking serious concerns about safety in advanced robotics. All right, let's dive into this. So, Will Jackson, founder of Engineered Arts, recently gave us a full walkthrough of their new AI platform upgrade. He's standing there in a studio, casually introducing Jason, who's behind the camera. Nothing flashy, just... I'm here this morning with Jason, who's behind the camera. Good morning, Jason. And right beside them, a desktop robot. Not a towering humanoid, just a compact little unit you can get in any design, so long as it's black or white with a gray face. That's the deal, and honestly, that minimal look feels intentional. Keeps the focus on what really matters, the software. Because the software is where things start getting seriously interesting. Engineered Arts just rolled out a feature called ROS, Robot Operating System. But in this case, it's more of a behavioral engine than a pure OS. This tool lets you define how your robot behaves in different situations. Not just what it says, but how it says it, how it reacts, what it knows, what kind of style or tone it uses when talking to you. It's not just a database or a chatbot, you're literally shaping the robot's identity. We'll start the demo by talking to Louise, one of their AI personas. She's got a voice, a personality, and she's ready to walk you through the whole Ross setup. It all starts in a browser. You log into your Tritium account, which is their cloud-based robot platform, and boom, you're in the Ross UI. There are five main sections, identity, languages, personality, knowledge, and abilities. Identity is like the robot's passport. You can rename it, change where it's from, and tweak how it presents itself. Will changes Louise's name to Chloe, makes her French, and deletes all languages except French. Then, just to mix it up again, he adds back English, German, Spanish, and Japanese. No coding, no compiling, it's all drop downs and text inputs, and it works. When he asks Chloe to tell him what languages she knows, she fires off a list. I can chat in English, French, German, Spanish, and Japanese. What's your pick? Then he pushes her to give a poem using one line in each language, and she does it, no hesitation. In the morning light, the world awakes. Le soleil se lève sur un nouveau jour. Die Welt erblüht im ersten Licht. The flow is smooth, but it gets better. Will decides to transform Chloe into the greatest paint salesperson of all time, so he gives her a personality profile that's completely obsessed with paint. Literally, the only thing she cares about is paint colors. Then, he uploads some custom knowledge, like a whole list of Dulux paint shades. He also flips on a few abilities, computer vision and voice recognition. Now, Chloe can recognize rooms and suggest paint schemes based on what she sees, and she can remember customers by their voice. So Will asks her, what do you see in this room? Can you tell me what you can see in this room? Chloe responds like a legit interior designer bot. She describes the space, industrial, high ceilings, stacked boxes, strong light sources. The setting appears industrial, with high ceilings and exposed beams. And then suggests paint colors, not random ones either. She recommends Sapphire Salute and Tranquil Dawn. If you're a designer, that probably means something to you. To everyone else, it just sounds oddly poetic. But the tech behind it, that's the impressive part. Because it's all running in real time, the robot isn't just spitting pre-written responses, it's analyzing its environment, accessing specialized knowledge, and adjusting its personality to stay in character. And this, by the way, is where we pivot hard. Because while Engineered Arts is teaching robots how to become hyper-specialized, responsive assistants, another company is dealing with a robot that went berserk in the air. Let's talk about Unitree's H1 robot. This isn't a concept model or something locked in a lab. The Unitree H1 is a commercially available humanoid robot that stands 5.9 feet tall and weighs 104 pounds, or 47 kilograms. It's built to walk, run, dance, backflip, basically all the dynamic stuff you expect from a cutting edge machine. Each joint can generate up to 365 pound feet of torque that's serious power, strong enough to lift hefty objects, but also strong enough to break something, or someone, if things go wrong. And recently, things went very wrong. 
There's a video that dropped and spread like wildfire. It shows the H1 being tested in a Chinese facility. Suspended by a crane, you've got two handlers nearby standing casually, watching the robot hang there. Then suddenly, without warning, the thing snaps. Its limbs start flailing, arms swinging, legs kicking. It hits a computer, knocks over equipment, and yanks the crane in a way that almost brings the whole setup crashing down. One of the handlers jumps back, visibly startled. You can hear someone off camera yell, what the F was that? Oh my God, what the f was that? I'm so sorry. In total panic, another voice, reportedly the CTO of REK, Amanda Watson, screams the same thing. It's chaos. The footage was shared on X by someone named Six Liv, a member of the REK team. He later explained that they had triggered a full body policy in the robot's control system while its feet weren't on the ground. Basically, the robot thought it had ground contact. It didn't, and that mismatch created an instability spiral. It's not the first time this has happened, either. Back in May, there was another incident also in China where a Unitree H1, again suspended by a crane, suddenly started thrashing during a test. It wasn't just flinching, either. This thing looked like it was trying to fight its way out of its restraints. Arms, legs, twisting everywhere. One engineer managed to calm it down by adjusting the support rig, but for a moment, it looked straight out of Robocop. There's even more. Earlier this year in February, during a festival, another AI-powered humanoid startled a crowd when it unexpectedly lunged forward while behind a safety barrier. Security stepped in quickly, no one was hurt, but the video blew up. Again, people debated whether it was a technical glitch or a sign of something more ominous. Now, most engineers will tell you these are control issues, glitches, misapplied motion policies, non-intentional aggression. But there's a very real psychological effect here. When a robot that's shaped like a human suddenly lashes out with the force of a professional athlete, it doesn't feel like a glitch. It feels like danger. The Unitree H1's power is part of what makes it so compelling and so dangerous. 365 pound-feet of torque at each joint means it can move like a human, but with machine precision and strength. And that's great when you're doing backflips or lifting cargo. It's not so great when a misfire causes the thing to punch a wall, or worse. Some folks online think these videos might be staged, publicity stunts to build hype around robot combat. There's a growing movement of companies who see robot fighting as the next big entertainment category, action without the human cost. It's dramatic, it's dangerous looking, and it's viral by design. But even if that's true, even if some of this is exaggerated on purpose, the underlying risk is real. You don't need a robot to turn evil for it to be dangerous. You just need a bug in the code, or a mismatch between what the robot thinks is happening and what's actually happening like running a full body locomotion policy when the feet aren't touching ground. That alone can cause the system to try and stabilize itself with violent force. This is where things get serious. These machines are out in the world now, commercial, mobile, and capable of acting on their own. And when that power misfires, it is not just a glitch, it is a threat. And that's it. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit like, subscribe if you're into this kind of tech coverage, and I'll catch you in the next one.